media functions to protect the interests of the powerful. And in this case, there was just a complete bipartisan convergence around challenging Trump via this fake Russiagate thing and demonizing Russia in the process. So if you are an establishment journalist, then you internalize the fact that if you challenge this narrative, there's going to be consequences for you. And if you want to be promoted, you will, you will promote the narrative. Russiagate, the war in Syria, the alleged chemical weapons attack in 2018 in Douma. Listen to the mainstream and you'll hear one agreed narrative on all of them. Questioning that narrative can make you a target, which is something that independent journalist Aaron Maté knows all about. Last year, he won an Izzy Award, which is kind of like an Oscar for independent journalists. And that was for his work on Russiagate. Aaron joins me now from New York. Aaron, welcome and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, I kind of want to ask you about Russiagate straight away. I know that that's been the focus of a lot of your work, this idea that Donald Trump and the Kremlin were in cahoots during the 2016 election. You've called Russiagate reporting uh, fan fiction and for example, you actually retweeted this tweet by the White House reporter for CBS, um, Paula Reed, who said, noticing a sharp uptick in social media trolling from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. lately, many of the anti-mask disinformation comments on this tweet started at around the same time people in Moscow would be getting up. Can you take me through why you thought this tweet was somehow illustrative, perhaps, of the levels of psychosis in Western discourse right now? I mean, there's a million to choose from. Russia has been blamed for racial unrest and injustice in the United States. Uh, it's been accused of having the capacity to freeze millions of Americans to death. This was by Rachel Maddow, the uh, top-rated liberal cable news show host. You can go on and on and on. Russia has been blamed for everything, starting with the election of Donald J. Trump in 2016. And what this is a product of is a convergence of many factors, all of them sharing one underlying theme, which is that it exists to protect the power, privilege, and pride of the powerful. So take the Democratic Party, which has pushed Russiagate above all else since 2016. They lost to a clown in 2016, Donald Trump, a buffoon, who pretended to be a working class champion. And even though he was such a con artist, the, there was so much unhappiness and outrage at the Democrats for their failed neoliberal legacy that enough people in enough states were willing to vote for a con man. Uh, who presented himself as being anti-establishment because they were that fed up with the Democrats, that the media functions to protect the interests of the powerful. And in this case, there was just a complete bipartisan convergence around challenging Trump via this fake Russiagate thing and demonizing Russia in the process. So if you are an establishment journalist, then you internalize the fact that if you challenge this narrative, there's going to be consequences for you. And if you want to be promoted, you will, you will promote the narrative. And is there a sense, do you say, that it's such a niche kind of group of journalists, of independent journalists, that challenge this narrative? Do you ever feel like you're in an echo chamber of your own, uh, you know, of your own views, that it's not kind of breaking out of whatever established audience you've got already? You know, I don't think about that. I'm responsible for what I say and I put it out there, and it's up to anyone who hears me to do with it what they want. I can't control the fact that people will ignore me or will call me names or try to censor me. I can only push back and, and do what I do. So whether or not I'm in an echo chamber, that's a reflection to me of forces beyond my control. I mean, it's true that you know we're all responsible for how we come off and how we reach people. And I always try to think about what can I do to be the most effective in reaching people, to not be self-righteous? It's very easy to be self-righteous as being a human and being a someone who's on the left and always being attacked. It's like, you know, there's always this like, there's always a pull to be self-righteous and indignant and to be frustrated 
that you know people are attacking you. But you know we're all responsible for how we come off, and so I can just I try to do what I can to be mindful and to be and to reach everyone in a respectful way. And it's a good approach is just try to let the facts speak for themselves. Focus on the facts. Avoid personal attacks, no matter what someone says to you. I like to make fun of Russia Gators because it's funny. It's like it's funny that like this conspiracy theory has like totally uh, taken over the U.S. liberal media and political establishment. It's just funny. It's just fun to make fun of. And it's, you know, comedians, a lot of comedians like on late night aren't making fun of it, so I might as well. Yeah, no one's making fun of it, really. Yeah, it's... which is too bad. They're missing a huge comedy opportunity because it's so, it's, it's hilarious. So, you know, I, I have fun sometimes, but I think that's okay. So, but, you know, I... Uh, it's always worth thinking about is are you, are you doing what you can to be the most effective? But beyond that, you know, I don't worry about the echo chamber thing because look, there's, we're, we're always going to be attacked. My gray zone colleagues and I, we've learned this firsthand. When people attack us, they don't challenge us on the facts.